Welcome to the UDBG, the University of Delaware Botanic Gardens. So this is my area, it's the Warlow Hall Mounds. This area was designed in 1999 by Dr. John Frett. He designed it for the purpose of expanding the plant palette in the garden to further education for plant students. So this area was under construction in 2018 due to Warlow Hall being renovated. Due to this, as well with COVID, the garden did not get maintained as it usually does. We've had a lot of work this summer, uh, bed edging as well as mulching and spraying a whole bunch of weeds and grass that has grown into the bed. So by getting rid of this, the garden's really looking back into shape. In 1966, Emily B. Clark donated the funds to establish and maintain this garden. This garden was then designed by uh, Drs. Charles Dunham and Richard Lightley. They wanted this garden to be both a beautiful place to be and a teaching garden, so they selected ornamental conifers, broadleaf evergreens, flowering shrubs, flowering trees. Because this garden was one of the first established here on the Botanic Gardens, it has some of the oldest and most mature specimens. So here I have been doing just some routine maintenance, removal of dead leaves, dead limbs, pruning, edging, mulching. I've also added some additions to this garden, including some sumac, some fragrant sumac, grolo, some dutzia, and catoni easter. This is the Dunham Garden, which I've been working in individually this summer. It's a Japanese-inspired garden. It was designed by Dr. Gary Smith and a few landscape architecture students in the spring of 1997 in honor of Charles Dunham, who was a UD professor and also founded the UDBG. Over the summer, I've done a lot of like routine maintenance, spraying, pruning. Uh, we've also done some transplants to add more privacy to the entrance from the road. I also worked on the widow's walk and the magnolia bed behind me. Whenever summer like started, this area was covered in junipers, weeds, and magnolias. So the junipers were taken out and then I took down all the weeds, dug them out, and all that's left is the magnolias to provide a screening for the pool. At the Lepidoptera Trail here, it was established back in 1992, and everything in here is native to the eastern U.S., and it's filled with trees, shrubs, and perennials, and anything like that. We have added some plants in here and removed some invasives that have recently come to light that they were invasive. The only stuff we'll add in here is native to this area. Lepidoptera itself is the order for butterflies, moths, and skippers. So all the signs you see in this area are just the caterpillar and the adult life forms of those specific insects. And um, they really like all the native plants here. It's a good source of food for them and pollination and everything like that. The history of the hydrangea garden, it was created by a graduate student, Jason Vale, in the 90s. Uh, this area, as well as Fisher, it used to be a one acre rose garden, but that was changed over in the uh, 60s to what it is now. It's pretty much just to getting all the different variants of hydrangeas and bushy plants that you see as you walk through, but this was a graduate student's project it, and it finished in 2016. It was started in 2014 before the COVID crisis, so it was able to be finished, unlike some of the other gardens that you've seen. That was a brief history lesson on the UDBJ, and we're located on the University South Campus, right behind Uderi, and it's open to the public. It's free to come. You can come anytime and just take a walk around and look around and just see anything that you would like to see. So thanks for coming.